from an unalienable <laughs> point of view of creation that all men are created equal, right? When you start having disdain for other people's rights, then you are automatically admitting that it's okay at some point to take away your rights. So I'm making myself a banana energy drink. I'm gonna use yogurt and frozen banana. I learned this trick in the States when I used to buy stuff on sale. Like you'd buy a bunch of fruit on sale and then you would freeze it. So all I do is freeze these bananas here. You can get them every day of the week, really good price. And so when there's too many of them, and instead of letting them rot and throw them out, you just throw them in the freezer. And then a week or two later, you peel them, put them in your blender. I've got some, uh, got some yogurt here. And you can add a little drop of vanilla. And there we go. Hey everybody. Now for you guys that have been us with us for a while, you already know where we're at. And if you would like to, you can tell the new folks in the comments where we're at. <laughs> but this is really sweet with the bananas in it and with the hint of uh, vanilla. It's, a, it's really sweet. It's like an energy, sweet energy drink. There's no sugar in it. Speaking of energy drink, we just got back from a three and a half hour walk around town. Now this wasn't walk an hour and then sit in a restaurant another 40 minutes. This was walking the whole time, just running around doing this and that. And this energy drink is very timely. And so, but yeah, that was one of the things on our bucket list when we left the States was we didn't want to be so sedentary. By the way, I wanted to really give a friendly hug to Joe that's been emailing me just relentlessly offering encouragement as far as the different things to do with these herbs and I've added to my arsenal today that was one of the things we did with the three and a half hours where the walking was I went to the uh, one of the health food stores walked all the way downtown uh, and uh, I got this, uh, this magnesium and I've just a lot of people don't realize that the altitude it is not something to be taken lightly because what what it does is there's a with there's two segments to it there's the initial altitude and a lot of people confuse altitude issues with with the initial uh part where they just land in the altitude and they it takes a while to adjust to that and that's the initial and then there's the long-term altitude which we have spoken about before when we were living in Cuenca, Ecuador before and uh the long-term effects is that it interferes with your absorption of nutrients and what that means in simple language is that even though you're normally eating a balanced diet but with plenty of fruits and vegetables and such you're not absorbing because of the altitude and the lack of oxygen in your uh, in your gut you're not absorbing what you think you are and so that's the reason normally i don't what i'm trying to say is i normally don't really take a whole bunch of supplements. I subscribe to the, uh, uh, you know, food is my medicine philosophy. And especially when you've got uh, the space to grow uh, whatever foods you want, then, then it's easy to do that. But uh, here in the apartment, we don't do that. And because we're in altitude, we're, we're doing a lot of this uh, herbal supplementation. So Joe, thank you so much. I wanna give you a friendly hug. You have been so friendly to me. Uh, on the email that I wanted to take a moment to to thank you uh, profusely here on this video but I, I'm not sure if I got the right one or not I may not have gotten the one I'll have to go back through the emails and see because you did warn me uh, not to get a certain brand uh, so I, I would you know I'm not sure if I got I didn't write it down when I went to the store anyway I'm adding to my arsenal as Joe keeps writing to me in the email and uh, you saw my herbal routine from the other video I made uh, about the herbal supplements. But speaking of weapons, these are weapons for our health. And we are, we are in a battle here in the altitude. We're fighting altitude and we do have a, a natural uh, arsenal and uh, therefore 
we do uh, take uh, responsibility. You know, you hear me say things about masks on this channel and this kind of thing and, and all this. And that's because we're somebody that has all, you know, for an, our entire lives, ever since I was a teenager, I've always had this really curious, this curiosity about health because I was interested in bodybuilding as a teenager. Yeah, I used to have Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, book. When it first came out, I was 16, uh, and I was a, an aspiring bodybuilder, and I started studying uh, sport nutrition at that time, and then it morphed into just normal nutrition and health. So, saying all that to say that we're not a channel that's just blowing opinions all over the place like a lot of people do, but remember that a lot of people that do that uh, are also being paid. That's what shills, that's what the meaning of a shill is. They're being paid to put out certain misinformation. And it's a really sad state of affairs that we're in because there's an awful lot of shills out there everywhere. Um, and I could talk about that in a different video. But as far as arsenal and weapons, when we first came here, I should say that in the States, uh, I have owned I used to like collections of guns and collecting guns. And I had all kind of different kinds of guns. I just liked to collect them uh, because I we traveled around in a travel trailer and I had to put them in storage and it just became cumbersome as we've made previous videos about the uh, challenges of uh, being nomadic and how you can't really keep your little pet collections of things, whatever that is, whether it's guns, coins, uh, bottle caps, no matter what it is, a guy wrote in saying in the comments that he was gonna put everything in storage. Well, you're not gonna wanna, you're not gonna wanna do that in the long run. You're, you're gonna wish you wouldn't have. But long story short, um, I had a 1918, I think it was, it was, Colt 45. This was from 1918 with the original holster that nowadays, had I kept it, nowadays it's worth thousands thousands of dollars, maybe even more than $10,000. Uh, had, I, had I kept it, it would have been a really valuable collectible. But uh, anyway, the, the saying that I haven't bought guns in a while and I don't own any now, but when I came down here, I met some expats that did have guns and they told me the prices and they seemed really, really high compared to the States. Well, apparently right after, shortly after we got here, the, uh, the laws changed. And that's one thing about some of these countries is that their laws change very quickly in these places. And I was just reading an article um, a while back here in Ecuador. They're wanting to make guns legal again because right after we got here, I started saying they made them illegal. You couldn't own the guns. And I would engage taxi drivers and talk to them about to learn about the culture. And they would tell me, no, you, you can't do this. You can't sh shoot an intruder. You can't this and that. And then they make guns illegal. And I didn't even know it. I wasn't keep, keeping track of it. But I, I heard that recently they, they are trying to vote whether they should make the guns legal once again. Apparently the farmers that are out in the country are having trouble with thievery where you know their livestock is getting uh, stolen and, and this kind of thing. So, and the debate is uh, whether they should make guns legal so that these farmers can protect themselves against thievery, or whether they should sh they should simply have a government tracking system where they put chips in the animals and the government tracks them for you. Now, to my mind, the minute you start chipping animals and doing all this kind of thing, to my mind, it's not that much of a stretch to you start chipping animals well why not chip people you know so I, I don't get that excited when I hear these kinds of things anytime a government program comes around you know how's it gonna get paid for anyway you know we, we stay out of politics but I can't help but notice that people uh, especially in the expat community everybody's got an opinion and I'm not uh, giving an opinion here I'm just thinking about these subjects in from a different perspective. There's an awful lot of people out there and they just, it's so easy nowadays with uh, social media for everyone to voice their disdain, you know. Oh no, we can't legalize guns in Ecuador, why that would be the Wild West. We wouldn't want that, look at America, you know. And uh, the thing is that, um, I just like to remind people that whenever people are so eager to take away other people's rights, whatever the right is, you know, but the basic human rights 
uh, are listed in the Bill of Rights of the U.S. Constitution for a reason. Okay, so those, those are basic rights of humanity. They are unalienable. You're not allowed to take them away. Not lawfully. And, and, and that goes for creation in any country. Whether they, you know, in any part of the globe, it doesn't matter. You can't say, well, we're in this part of the globe, so things are different. Uh, people don't have rights. From an unalienable, from an unalienable <laughs> point of view of creation, that all men are created equal, right? When you start having disdain for other people's rights, then you are automatically, I like to remind people, admitting that it's okay at some point to take away your rights. And the thing about that is if you don't appreciate rights and you say, well, I don't care, um, you may not care about these particular rights, but I'm sure there are some rights you do care about. Regardless though, at some point you're agreeing it's okay to take your rights. And once that happens, it's too late. Once you lose your rights, it's much, much harder to get them back. So I just like to remind people of that before they go off and uh, you know, uh, do what people do on social media. All right, so the guns were outlawed and they're, it's, it's back in the news. They want to, they're debating whether they should, uh, you know, legalize guns or not. It seems to me that uh, uh, criminals have weapons, whether it's guns, sticks, or knives. Criminals always have weapons and a lot of criminals do have guns. So anyway, um, just thought you might want to know what's going on here in Ecuador and thanks for staying with me in the video and I hope I can inspire you to appreciate other people's rights and, uh, and even your own rights anywhere in the world. Thanks for watching.